Welcome to another episode of InRange. I'm coming to you today with the H&K VP70. The VP70 is the first polymer handgun to hit the market as early as 1970, well before the Glock. Now, a lot of people are familiar with this handgun already, including its use in the conflict on LV426, so I'm not going to go into too much of that, but I will give you the basics. But one thing I want to do with this video, which I never see anyone really talk about, is that this handgun will give you demonstrably lower velocities with standard 9x19 9mm ammunition than any other traditional 9mm, and there's reasons for that. The Volks pistol concept, the people's pistol, was something developed right at the end of World War II by the Germans in an attempt to mass manufacture cheap and easy to make 9mm handguns. Now, why they thought they needed 9mm handguns in mass quantities at the end of the war, I don't know. But that Volks pistol project never really went anywhere besides gee whiz concepts and a few demo models. But at that point, the Volks pistol concept had incorporated a couple ideas. It was a very simplistic slide that was usually f was folded and welded and some mass was added and it was a, just a direct blowback 9mm. Direct blowback means there's no locking surfaces anywhere in this gun, not on the slide or the barrel. The only thing that keeps the, the gun shut and safe during the pressure generated during a cartridge detonation event is the mass of the slide and the strength of the spring. Well, that of course keeps it simple and why it was part of parcel of this simplistic Volks pistol concept. Well, HK in the 1970s came out with this gun. They ran it from 1970 to 1989. It was a civilian model, which is this one, which has a safety, a military model, which had a stock that allowed for three round burst, making it sort of a PDW. Um, the military version had no safety whatsoever. It was strictly the trigger press, which is quite heavy as its safety. but. What they did is they incorporated the ideas based on that original Volks pistol design. Extremely simplistic manufacture, very heavy slide, direct blowback. But to keep the gun closed for a longer duration of time and thus within safe levels, they did one extra thing. They cut very deep grooves in the lands and grooves of the rifling of the barrel. And what that did is allows for gas intentionally to bypass the projectile while it's leaving the barrel, and that reduces the pressures generated in the chamber, thus keeping the action closed for a longer duration of time in a direct blowback system, which you need to be careful with when you get to cartridges as powerful as 9mm. So here we have one projectile caught in a water tank from this VP70, and you can see by the scorch marks right there in the grooves, that there was gas blow-by right on the projectile, which is what I'm describing. And you can see as I hold this that it really does engrave very deeply with the rifling. What this means, however, is that the VP70, in regards to allowing gas to blow by the projectiles, that it will reduce the velocity of the projectile quite dramatically. In fact, while this has a four and a half inch barrel, other guns with shorter barrels will actually produce higher velocities of the same ammunition than this will. We're going to demonstrate that later in the video. First, let's field strip. So here we have the HKP70Z, the civilian, and all of its 1970s polymer frame goodness. Uh, we have a heel release for the magazine, very European, and there is our 18 round double stack double feed magazine. A really neat feature that is super easy to load even up to 18 rounds and something we don't see in really many handguns. I wish we saw this in more modern handguns. I think this is a great design feature. Civilian model has a safety right here. Pressed to the right means you cannot depress the trigger. Pressed to the left, red. Red usually means dead. You can now pull the trigger. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about the VP70 in this regard is that since it's a double action only pistol, uh, you can actually strike the primer more than once if you were to have a failure to detonate in bad ammunition. Not a common issue with modern ammunition, but you could do that with this if you were to have a failure to fire. Uh, this is again a very simplistic pistol. To field strip it, we literally pull down this lever and then pull the slide off. That is it. Uh, since it is a direct blowback gun, we have a very strong spring, a fixed barrel, and a quite heavy slide. A very simplistic slide that's manufactured, like I said, cheaply and rapidly with a lot of mass to help keep the action closed during direct blowback firing. Uh, very simple. There is nothing more than really a striker and a spring. And when the sear is depressed by the trigger press, this is retracted to the rear, which is a rather strong spring. The sear drops and the striker is then dropped to detonate the primer. And that is the entire slide. That's it, that's all you got going on. The actual frame and the gun itself is not to that much more complex. As I said, a fixed barrel and close that, safety it off. And as you'll see, as I press the trigger, you'll see the sear just drops to the rear or moves to the rear as I press it. As it gets far enough to the rear, it goes, it essentially drops and then drops the striker to fire the cartridge. 
that's all there is to it. Super simple. But what I do want to talk about, which I mentioned earlier in the video, is this. The lands and grooves. Now, a little hard to see, but you can see that this has been fired and it's dirty. But the lands and grooves on this gun are very deep. Deeper than any other normal 9mm handgun. And the reason for that is to allow gas to blow by the projectile and buy a little more time during the direct blowback action cycle. So that means that since gas is flowing past the projectile, it gives the slide and spring a little more time before they start moving under the, the recoil to cycle a new cartridge and therefore delay the opening until safe pressures have been achieved. Now, what this means is that when you're firing standard 9mm ammunition out of a VP70, you're going to get significantly lower velocities than you would out of another equivalent 9mm handgun. And I plan to demonstrate that to you today. So the VP70 has a 4.5 inch barrel, a little longer than average, and I looked through my inventory of guns that had similar barrel lengths, and the best I could come up with was a Hudson 9. Now, I'm not trying to bring the Hudson out because it's a meme gun or anything like that, but it has much more standard traditional rifling, which is a little harder to see on the camera because it's not field stripped, but I think you can already tell that the lands and grooves are not nearly as deep as they are on the HK. Just by, just by that alone, you can see it. Um, you can see it right there. It's very clear that the lands and grooves on the standard 9mm barrel in the Hudson and the VP70 are quite different. The grooves are much shallower on the Hudson. So what we have here though is the Hudson has a 4.2 something inch barrel and the VP70 has a 4.5 inch barrel and I'm going to fire the same ammunition out of both guns and we're going to get an average of five shots with each ammunition in each gun and you're going to see that the VP70 has significantly lower velocities than another equivalent 9mm handgun, even though the VP70 has a longer barrel length. We're out here with our chronograph, and I'm gonna start with, you know, the highest of quality, Tula ammo steel case 9mm, 115 grain. And we're gonna start with our control pistol, the Hudson. This has the 4.2 something inch barrel. Let's see what we get. 1148, 11.53, 1141, 1155, and another 1155. Interesting. So fairly consistent. Actually not as bad as I would expect with Tula. So let's go ahead and dry fire that, put that in our pocket. And now we've got Colonial Space Marines VP-70. Ten thirty-eight. 1001, 1032, 1025, 977, and the VP70 does not have a lockback. So as you can see, we have a significant velocity drop on Tula. Let's go get another box of ammunition. Now we've got Magtech, 115 grain, brass cased ammunition. Once again, starting with the Hudson. 1184. 1192. 1176. 1167. 1198. Okay. Same ammunition, BP-70. 1071, 1049, 1081, 1095, 1081, and of course, nothing. Remington UMC, 115 gray, same process. 1081, 1072, 1065, 1062, 1085. You know, I've heard Remington's underpowered. It appears to be true. All right, VP70. 993, 997, 985, 983, 977.
So I sort of accidentally realized that I had 10 rounds only of 158 ground grain PPU subsonic. So um, I'm curious to see what the bullet mass or subsonics will do if there's any difference there. Hudson first. 890. 883. 900. 896. 881. All right. BP70. 749. 757. 771. 830, 783. I had one more idea though. I forgot that I also have a P365XL in my possession at the time, which has a sub four inch barrel. We're talking three point something. Let's go through the same ammunition, excepting the 158 grain, because I don't have that available and see if the sub four inch barrel can on the P365XL can actually keep up with velocity wise the 4.5 inch P70. Well, let's see here. Very different size pistols, 4.5 inch sub four inch barrel. I've loaded these in the same order that I just fired in the video. So the first round out of this will be Tula. First round out of this will be Tula. Second round out of this will be the Magtech. Second round out of this will be Magtech. Last round out of this will be the Remington UMC. Last round of this will be the Remington UMC. I don't have any more of the 58 grain. So let's go ahead and see what we get. VP70. 1020. 1161. Four inch barrel, sub four inch barrels beating the VP70. All right, this is the Magtech. 951. 1102, Remington UMC, 1035, 1050, not as big a difference on that one. However, it's very interesting to note that this sub 4 inch barrel on the P365 is actually beating the velocities out of the VP70 because of those deeply cut grooves to reduce the amount of pressure in the chamber to keep this a simple direct blowback pistol. In summary, the VP70 was a very interesting design, taking its basis of something that they tried to make as a last ditch weapon at the end of World War II, and then trying to manufacture a more modern version of it as a cheap, reliable military pistol with high capacity of 18 rounds, the ability in the military incarnation to be three round bursts for a PDW, and polymer, which was a first of its type, and a direct blowback pistol, extremely simplistic in manufacture. However, deficiencies exist. A very bad trigger pull, and we, I mean bad. Um, the, uh, the recoil is reasonable, considering how much mass is moving, but more than it should be. But on top of that, the reduction of the velocity of standard 9mm to the point where you start to really have 380 plus P type performance out of a 9mm pistol. So, I guess we give them, we have to give them credit for being innovative and attempting to do something new. But in terms of this being uh, a really good pistol, I guess that's a questionable statement. It is definitely a historically interesting one. Well, I hope that this brought something to light about the VP70 that you don't see on other content about the VP70. Not just the design features or how, but the reality of what they tried to do to make this a safe direct blowback pistol. In, in that you really do lose velocity to the point where you're shooting nine millimeter or standard nine by 19 and getting velocities not that different than 380 plus P. Guys, if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting InRange on Patreon. We have no sponsors, no overlords, no advertisers, completely proactively demonetized channel. All the ammunition expended today, which, as you know, right now during the pandemic, is a difficult thing to acquire, was acquired because of Patreon supporters. And the ability to make this video is because of Patreon supporters. Um, if you can't totally understand, subscribe to the channel on one of its multiple distribution points. You can find them all at inrange.tv slash watch. And most importantly, because the algorithm does not favor us, Please share with your friends. Thank you very much.